We're gonna go over the Greenworks CRZ428. This is an 80 volt zero turn mower with a 42 inch deck. This dude is interesting, but it's not gonna work for everyone. And I'm gonna walk you through this $4,500 machine to see if it's going to work perfectly for you. And at the end, you can tell me if I made a $4,500 mistake. Let's dive into this guy. The feel that you get mowing with this zero turn is very similar to the feel that you would get with a two to $3,000 Home Depot or Lowe's lawnmower that is gas powered. It's small, it's lightweight, it's nimble, but the big difference is under the seat, we roll that forward and then we lift up on our cover. We have six 80 volt Greenworks batteries. These are nice because you can remove them. The downside is you have to remove them every time to charge them. So you have to pull all six out, put them on the charger, and when you're done, put all six of them back. There is no way at this point in time to just plug this machine in and let them charge in place. In my opinion, Greenworks did just about everything possible to make this feel like a gas mower. You have your key, this will turn on your lights, this will turn on the run mode, but then to start it, you have a normal start switch that goes over. This will go through its boot up and then it'll beep. That lets me know I can move this guy around if I want to, or turn on the blades. Everything else here is very similar. We have two drive speeds, a high and a low. This is very responsive, so you could use the low if you're going around or close to different items. You have a blade speed of high and a low. The low is going to save battery, not going to cut as well. I use this strictly on high because I'm cutting a decent amount of grass. Your blade on off switch here in which we'll turn it on. That's on low, there's high is going to create most of the noise that this unit makes, mostly because those blades are spinning pretty quickly down there and creating a lot of velocity. It's a little bit louder in the shop than it is outside. Still something I would wear earplugs on. We have our hour meter here, which I have 2.9 hours on this at this point in time, and our battery meter. You'll notice that I am 100% cutting grass very tall. It's spring in Michigan, everyone has different grass, but we have a very dry spring. So I'm keeping the grass taller so the sunlight doesn't get down, dry out the lawn. Uh, we are cutting a significant amount. We're probably cutting from six, six and a half inches down to four and a half inches. Now, what I need to say here is four and a half inches on this mower is about the equivalent of four inches on my John Deere. So we're cutting, what I would call four inches, and that's having this mower cut a little more than normal. So I'm going slow here also because there are bunnies in the yard and I'm trying not to get any bunnies caught up in this machine. I'm giving them a chance to move out of the way or I'm trying to spot them beforehand. But this mower deck is very easy to move height. You pull up on this handle, you can drop it all the way down to 1.5 inches and it goes up in half inch increments. Very simple to use. One of the better systems that I've seen and I really like the fact that it's just straightforward and simple. You'll also notice that I'm using the mulching attachment here which screws into place on the bottom and just lets our little chute go right over top of it. This is doing a great job mulching. I'm very surprised and it works well even in tall grass. Now it works even better if you lower it down a little bit, get in that three inch range for mulching, but again, we're trying to stay quite high. The chute works awesome also. I use that a bit up north and it seems to kick grass out quite a ways, but it also doesn't layer it. So it kind of just blows it all over so it can disperse in the grass. Front to this mower is very interesting. You have a hitch up here, so you could actually use any standard Reese hitch style mount that's two inch add weight if you wanted to, or put a trailer hitch on here, just about anything. And as far as if you wanted to move a trailer around, a small one, obviously, weight isn't gonna be an issue. These are solid tires up front. And while you can push on them a little with your thumb and they're pliable, they do offer a pretty rough ride. You do have LED lights up front. And something that I like about this, you can take your floorboard off, pretty big piece of metal, and you can see underneath, get to the motors that are down here, and you can also get to the point where you could take off your deck or anything, but it allows you to get in here and clean things out. 
The seat on the Greenworks is very comfortable, a little bit stiff in the beginning, but it loosens up quite quickly. Arms go up and down on each side, which is nice. There is no adjustment on the backrest. There is a hole in the bottom to drain the water down if any water gets on this. This is IP rated. It says right here IPX4, so it can take some rain. It can sit outside, no issue. You can adjust the seat forward and back. It has multiple different spots to stop on it. I'm 6'4", I feel like a giant on this, probably look like a giant on this, uh, but if you were shorter, you could easily adjust that up. Also, you have adjustments on these arms, so you could adjust the arms backwards or more forward. This area back here, where the motor would normally go, is now sort of a trunk, and it's actually very useful from throwing small pieces in it to carrying any type of fertilizer, any type of seed, any anything can be thrown back here and it works really great. You have a hitch that you can tow a maximum of 300 pounds. So if you're doing an aerator or anything like that, you're good. If you needed to hook onto this, these little bars here, you could hook on and pull if you got into a situation that was uh, not good, which I'm sure some people could get into. And that's gonna take me to these tires. These tires are decent and you think that they would work out great by looking at them, but they do not like hills. They do not like a lot of slippery grass. They will slide around in many situations and they probably should be slightly more aggressive. Now I understand that would tear your lawn up if you start doing circles or something, but there are many times that you go to turn and if you're even slightly off camber, you're just gonna spin one wheel and not be able to get out of that situation. So these tires stopped me from using this at my cabin up north, which I think is an ideal situation. So I don't have to have gas. I don't don't have to have oil. I can just hop on this and go. I don't have a lot of room up there for everything. Keep this out of hilly areas. If you have a lawn like that, probably a small zero turn like this is not for you. This deck has two anti-scalping wheels. They are adjustable, one on each side, nothing in the back. So set them up to the proper height. And that'll help you out. They're not gonna go incredibly low. You only have one setting lower than this, which is not much lower than the deck is actually at anyway. But you can also use that hose adapter there to clean out the deck turn it on, run some water through there, and rinse out everything. Here's what I think Greenworks did incredible. They didn't add a lot of technology to this. They do have two USB ports, so you could charge two devices here while you're cruising around. You have a large cup holder, and you have a place kind of to slide your phone or something to put earplugs or anything else in. But there's no big screen, there's nothing like that, and that's just more to break to me on these lawnmowers than it is to help. And that's a serious statement. The more electronics and the more screens, dashes, the more things that communicate with each other have more of a chance to break. And you're buying an electric mower for no maintenance. You don't wanna be carrying it or trailering it back and forth to have something fixed. You don't want a bunch of wires going to a bunch of different places that turn and move because when they wear out or something gets a little broken in there, things start to happen and go wrong. You see it with cars, there's a point where too much technology is not good, and that's where I think this lands perfectly in the fact that it doesn't have a ton of technology on the outside. It might on the inside to get all these batteries working together, to get all this stuff happening, but you don't have that externally in many places. You see a wiring harness going to a couple motors. You see little things that are all wired in, but nothing extravagant. So getting down to how much will this mow, that to me is the second piece of this. Uh, I live on a, in a subdivision with two lots. So we have approximately an acre of lawn. I went through and mowed it up in different sections so you could kind of see where I was at. I get through half of my lawn on one full charge of this. So this is going to be good for someone who has a very small yard, someone who is just on the cusp of a push lawnmower or a riding lawnmower, and this is going to give them a great time to go out, buzz through the lawn. If you're cutting like I am, a fairly significant amount of grass, you're going to get about 35 minutes out of this machine running it on full speed. Overall, I was pleasantly surprised with the speed of the mower going forward. Going reverse is slow, and going reverse in the slower range is even slower. So the only issue I have is 
I'd like to have a little more speed in reverse. Going fast, plenty quick enough going forward. You're in the eight mile an hour range and it, she's cruising right along. Backwards, you're, you're in the walking pace-ish and that can sometimes get to be slow. Other than that, this thing was great, did everything I could have expected it to, except I wished it had a little bit more traction on the hills for me, which takes it out of my cabin use, but I can use it around the shop real easy just to cut things up really quickly. And I'll get two, three cuts per battery charge, which is awesome. It does leave enough in the tank for the battery for you to cruise back, albeit at a slow speed, probably just faster than walking. And that's good. 4% left in the battery allows you to get back home so you can get close to those chargers, pull the batteries out and go in. Really wish this had a place to plug in and charge the batteries in place. That would give you the best of both worlds. A easily changed battery if one went bad, yet a good place just to plug it in and let everything sit inside and charge so you're not constantly in and out with batteries but there are a ton of other 80 volt tools that you can buy, including string trimmers, snow blowers, blowers, anything you can think of outside that use these same batteries. So once you have the batteries, you can buy a bunch of other tools. It all works together in conjunction. I like that. Questions and comments below. Leave them down there. I'll answer them. I'll tell you my experience with this. It's an interesting mower that's gonna work for some and it's not gonna work for everyone. I get that. If you have questions on it, ask me below. I'll give you my best honest answer I can. Let me know what you think. If uh, $4,500 is the right price for this or not, take a look around the internet. Prices change and there are sales on these quite often. So do some searching. You can even find them at Best Buy if you're looking. So if you have Best Buy rewards or anything like that, you can use them on this guy. Thank you for your time, guys. Look forward to those questions and comments below. Give us a like in this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you for your time. Have a great day.